Hello everybody! I find it always interesting to hear from passionate fans who are creating and hosting unique content for the DayZ community. So I invited another fellow content creator, Zen Apparat, who is not only hosting many different servers, but he is also the master of customization. Hello there, how are you doing? Hi, hello everybody. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. And how long are you in the DC community? Are you a fresh spawn or are you a veteran? I'm pretty sure I'm a veteran. <laughs> I'm playing, yeah, basically since the DayZ mod uh, released, uh, more or less. Since then, it's an on and off thing, I guess. And what brought you into the community? Let me think about it. I think it was a YouTube video. Yeah, I think I saw a YouTube video of some German Let's Player. And I was pretty interested. I didn't uh, hear anything about Arma at this time. I didn't know that Arma existed, that Arma 2 existed, but I saw him playing and he explained a little bit about it. And I was fascinated by the concept and by the design of everything. Yeah, that's why I got into it. So back then, even YouTube was a big influence on the players. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah YouTube was pretty big uh, at this time already, yeah. Yeah, I also stumbled via a YouTube video on this mod. <laughs> it was basically the best advertisement and it was a big push for Armor 2 again. Yeah, it really was. I once heard that uh, Daisy mod uh, actually sold more Armor 2 units than Armor 2 on its own. <laughs> I can see that. It was also the reason I bought it, just for this mod. Exactly, same for me, yeah. I bought it twice, I think. <laughs> we played it on one LAN party, the original Armor Vanilla version, and we never touched it again. Well, to be honest, I uh, also started playing some Armor 2 Wasteland. Oh, yeah, m more that we, we tried different w flavors, but that's true, the, the Wasteland was more, more Armor-like. Yeah, yeah, it, it was very funny uh, back at the time, yeah. <laughs> and when did you decide basically to say, hey, I want a server, I want to mod myself? Uh, actually, I never did. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a different story for me, actually. Um, as I said, I started playing DayZ mod, then all the other mods came out, uh, Overwatch, I don't know, uh, everything you can remember and then there came a epoch and i was interested in it it had a lot of players of course you cannot uh, overlook it so you try it and i stumbled upon a german server it had a very uh yeah baby name something like uh the walking dead or something i don't know it was yeah very generic it was basically just epoch and it was on a channel's map and when i started playing one month later the guy who hosted it uh shout out to bolsonaro if he, if he ever sees it <laughs> i still have it in my steam list and uh, he switched to the Napf map and yeah i think it was going for half a year or something and then he decided that he yeah had no interest in basically hosting a server anymore so for him it, it was done with, with yeah he was done with epoch basically like, yeah, it was a fluctuation back then. And then I said, well, okay, then, yeah, I like the thing. Uh, just let me take over the server and I will keep it on as best I, as I can. And yeah, this is how it started for me, basically. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it took quite a while, actually. It, it was named uh, still um, The Walking Dead and everything. I still hosted uh, the Napf map and then... Uh, yeah, we had a lot of players. Uh, oh, I have to mention, um, because this is very important, I think, for most listeners, I always hosted PvE servers, always. I never played PvE a little bit. I never played PvE. I never hosted PV, uh, PvP servers. It was always PvE for me. So this is a unique uh, viewpoint, I think, for the listeners. I then wanted to try to change some stuff. It started with uh, adjusting trader prices and stuff like this, you know, the basic stuff every every admin tries to do. And yeah, I don't know, I, I, I liked it and I wanted to learn how you can do different stuff. I also have to mention, um, I have actually no background in coding whatsoever. 
I never learned any uh, coding language. I never had an IT job or something. <laughs> and yeah. Okay. What do you do in real life? Uh, in real life, I'm basically a salesman in a, oh, how do you call it? In, in a building supplies store. Oh, really interesting. Well, you need that skill definitely in Epoch. So it's very useful, but for the coding side, maybe not. Yeah, exactly. It was a very uh, unique experience for me doing this. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. It just, I couldn't get enough, enough of it. Like a lot of players or admins or server owners. I tried stuff. Uh, I failed, of course, quite a lot. I sometimes had to start over. I ran into problems I couldn't figure out. But later, eventually, I figured them out. It was a steep learning curve, curve for me, of course. And yeah, I don't know. Um, there came a time I met uh, a fellow guy um, named Captain Arkab. Uh, he became a good friend of mine. And he now is basically my co-admin uh, on all servers. Yeah, and he's still with me. That's very cool. And um, yeah, that's when we said, okay, let's do a rebrand. Let's do our own thing, you know. And yeah, we came up with the name The Last of Fugium. And uh, yeah, that's basically when we started doing uh, what we wanted to do. And that's uh, still, I don't know, like eight or nine years ago. <laughs> it's quite rare that... A community server is up for that long. It's really, really nice. And um, there was actually a small downtime. I think like three months or something where the servers were not up. But yeah, I regretted that step immediately and brought them back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before we go further, can you maybe give me a short summary? What is the idea behind your server collection and what maps do you host basically? Yeah. I think um, this is the most difficult thing for me to answer. Um, I will try. So it's PVE. And our idea was to basically make servers where the player still has a lot of challenges because uh, there's always this argument from the PVP players. Um, why do you play PVE? I mean, there is nothing to do. You basically just run around, you gather stuff, you build your base, and uh, that's it. And we always wanted something more, you know, that, that's, that was our struggle. So to make uh, something for the players they can experience, which is not only the basic PvE stuff. That's uh, why we try to implement so much new events and missions and crafting experiences. I don't know, there's so many stuff <laughs> nowadays. And I think that that's the idea behind our servers. We, didn't want just the plain PvE experience. We wanted always something more. Th this was our drive, you know. And this is, yeah, this is uh, the last refugium in a nutshell, I think. And of course, we were always survival into enthusiasts. We were not into the military aspect of um, of Epoch, which is very popular still. It's sad, I think, but it is what it is. Uh, we always were more. Uh, onto the survival train and that was also our drive yeah the first thing i really noticed when i joined the server was how easy you feel that you are not alone on an empty server it's really strange you play and you see somebody's running around you don't understand huh. what is this ah after some time of course that's an ai but I have never, never experienced random AI in that behavior. It's really, really interesting that you included that. Yeah, is it that unique? I don't think, is it? I think I saw other servers. The, the missions, of course, they spawn on nearly every server, but the random AI in the sense of a car is driving by, AI is interacting with the zombies, this I never have seen. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it basically, it's the basic AI program everyone uses. It's the ZAI. But of course, it's heavily customized what we do on our servers, like everything nowadays. But the basic concept is still the ZAI, yeah. Then I guess most servers I played didn't use it. Yeah, it could be, or they uh, disabled quite a lot of functions. I mean, there's so much stuff in the ZAI you can do. You can have random patrols, you can have random heli encounters, you can have 
random AIs in towns or or anywhere else. Yeah, you can do quite a lot with that tool. Also, to be honest, I played most of the time on PvP servers, but I got at some point bored, dying out of randomness from the <laughs> game itself and from assholes basically on the server. Yeah. It was never a fair fight where I said, okay, this is really interesting. So I decided for myself, I go the PvE route now. Good choice. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically the, the best choice in my life <laughs> in the gaming sense. Yeah, I mean, I can see why player love PvP, of course. I mean, it's... The, the struggle is real, you know, and the, the, the feeling you get from PvP, I think, is very unique, but yeah, it's not for me. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's good to have both ways, you know. Definitely, and I only enjoy PvP, or in armor, I only enjoy PvP, when it's more or less a populated server, plus 10 players, let's say. If there are only four players, why? All four players work to basically increase their base, loot something, and then ah, you get killed yeah, yeah. out of the blue. It's frustrating. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Go going back to your servers, you mentioned that you have some help, and you maybe tell me how many people in total worked on this server. Yeah, actually, uh, it's two. <laughs> it's me and Captain Arkab. But, but in the original, it was um, from a different server owner. Did he already develop some stuff or was it really vanilla-like? It was vanilla, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it was very vanilla. Okay, because I remember back then, there were a lot of Walking Dead servers, which customized it more like Walking Dead, that they are walking and not running all the time. The zombies. I w would have to say I cannot remember for sure. I think there was one or two custom scripts on the server, but uh, let's be honest, it was basically vanilla epoch. I see, I see. I mean, he did it for, I don't know how long he hosted the servers. It wasn't that long. As I said, like back in the day, there were people that were coming, they had fun with this game, and once they were finished uh, with the game and had no fun anymore, they dumped it again. Like, yeah, it's w what people do, you know? I mean, we are the anom anomaly in this. <laughs> I never checked really how easy is it to host an, a server on your own. Do you have to rent it somewhere or can you host it on your local machine and share it on the internet? Uh, you can do anything of these options you just mentioned. I mean, you can rent it from somewhere. Uh, actually, back in the days, uh, our servers were a Nitrado server. So there wasn't that much much customization anyway, because you couldn't do that much on Nitrado. And uh, yeah, you can have dedicated servers. You can rent those. That's what I do, actually. And you also can do it uh, from home. Yeah, I know... Uh, a female um, server owner, um, which has the uh, servers uh, Restturn, I think they are called. Uh, shout out to them. <laughs> um, as they uh, host from their home, actually. And th you don't have to tell me a whole number, but just in what ballpark we are from the price. Is it as, as expensive as the guys from Daisy Origins when you rent a server or... Is it cheaper for you guys? I don't know what you are paying for an origin servers, to be honest. <laughs> but you can say it uh, if you would have a normal DD box, I think you can pay something between 15, uh, 50 to 100 euros, I guess. If you want something better, it's more. That's, yeah, that's the number I can give you. If I remember correctly, it was around 27 euros. Oh, okay. Per month for a 30 slot server. Yeah. And around 70 euros per uh, month for a 70 or 80 slot server. It's on the heavy side. If you host multiple servers, it's expensive, I would say. Yeah, but you can go expensive with the DD boxes as well <laughs> if you want to. But yeah, I don't know if you need it for Arma 2 hosting. Exactly. The, back then, of course, I can imagine it was very hardware intensive to host 
armor service, but it's a few years later now. Yeah, but uh, the funny thing is, um, I, I don't know, um, Arma 2 is an old technology now and uh, the hardware moved on, you know. I don't think it's that much better, actually, <laughs> to host nowadays. I don't know. Arma still uses, I think, a single thread threading. So, yeah, you don't get much out of uh, a lot more cores, you know. That's true. That was always a big surprise when I upgraded my CPU to the next generation and... Yeah, it wasn't a big performance upgrade in Armour because it's only one core usage only. Uh -huh. Yeah, the graphics get a little bit better, but that's it, I think. <laughs> yeah, and when you play on PvP servers, you turn down the graphic entirely because if you see the grass, <laughs> you are in the you're on the bad side, basically. Yeah, you are dead then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh. And speaking about challenges, I guess after so many years, you faced a few programming challenges. Can you remember a few? Uh, yeah, there were quite a lot of challenges, actually. So maybe people don't know yet. Um, we added um, the Origins mod to all, all our servers. And the thing with Origins mod is you don't get the coding side of things. So if you add origins to your server, you only get the bot itself, only the assets, no coding whatsoever. So for example, if I wanted to implement the cars from origins, I would have to do a lot of work to make them uh, yeah, work on our servers, in, in Epoch uh, especially. The same goes for the buildings, uh, and same goes for the clothing systems, uh, anything. And uh, the second thing is the origins developers are... I don't know if I can say it here, but they are little assholes in my eyes. <laughs> and it's not the first time I hear that. <laughs> they made so much steps to make it uh, worse for anyone who tries to look at the files. There's so much stuff that, that is blocked and you have to find actually what they did and uh, find a workaround and everything. Yeah, uh, this was quite a challenge actually. And once I got that out of the way and we had everything working more or less, uh, I think the biggest challenge for myself and also, I mean, we can just uh, put that point together with another question, question you might have. The thing I'm most proud of is uh, my free character slot system. On our servers, you can have three characters on one server not, and not just one. Back in the days, there was a mod from uh, one of, I think it was one of the Epoch developers, I think it was XCOP or something. He made a small change to the Hive EXT uh, DLL, that's the file that uh, um, that uh, speaks to the database and returns everything. And this adjust adjustment was uh, that you can have three characters in Epoch. It was back in the days of Epoch uh, 10.1, uh, 5.1. And once uh, Epoch 106 came out, uh, you couldn't use this anymore. And I had my server set up with these three character slots, and then I had to revert the change, so we only had one character again. But since that day, uh, I don't know how many years ago that was, I was thinking about how I could recreate uh, this three characters uh, setup without customizing the DLL files. Because to be honest, I have absolutely no idea how you how you make a custom DLL file. I don't know if anybody does, but I don't know. <laughs> so what I came with, up with was um, there's another uh, tool uh, that's used quite a lot by um, server admins, and that's uh, the EXTDB. I don't know if you ever heard about it. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Uh, basically, it's something similar to the Hive EXT. It's also a database tool which connects to it, and you can... Uh, make custom calls and uh, return uh, stuff. And this way I was able to basically achieve the same thing uh, they did back in the days, but with quite a lot of more work, of course. I had to work around the limitations of the Hive EXT itself. And yeah, but uh, eventually after I don't know how many months uh, of setbacks, I did it. Yeah. And I was very proud that I finished this challenge. <laughs> Oh, and you should be, because it's like your special zombies and AI, 
it's yeah unique it's maybe i encountered it once or twice in my day c life it's so nice to have yeah, yeah, it's so cool, especially for a PvE server. I don't know if I would want this feature on a PvP server, to be honest, but on a PvE server, it's so nice. I mean, it fits so well with our theme. We didn't talk about this, but we have um, three factions on our PvE servers. You can become a ranger, um, a scavenger, or a headhunter, and you can play all of these three classes if you want to. And that's the nice thing about our servers, I think. And I mentioned it here also. You didn't customize, I guess, the behavior of the zombie, but the zombie va variety is huge on the server. They have so many different looks. The zombies aren't the only thing which which are from Origins. How did you achieve that, that you get so many stuff from Origins into your server? Yeah, uh, what I did was I searched um, back in the days, there were so many armor uh, websites where you could find stuff. And I looked for a tool that could uh, read out the config files of armor and every mod you add to your server. And I basically, I found a guy that made a script. Uh, it was called something like dump config or something. I don't remember. And with this um, uh, tool, I was able to read out basically the whole config file of armor. Everything was listed nicely in, in, in a nice layout and I basically could uh, check out what I wanted to find. So I, uh, I could also read out the origins config files with that. And that's how I knew, okay, there's this object, there's this item, there are these zombies, there are these cars and this car has this animation and I have to do this so I can it achieve uh, what I want. And this is basically how I found out uh, of yeah about uh, all the features of Origins. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I reverse engineered basically. <laughs> and was Origin the, the biggest influence on your server or with other big players in the Armor community where you thought, hey, that's uh, nice. I want to reverse engineer that also. No, uh, there were no other uh, developers like the Origins developers, to be honest. Uh, so nobody obfusc obfuscated their files except for the Origin developers. So yeah, if you wanted a mod and you wanted to take a look at it, it was no problem back in the days. You could look everything up. Only Origins was the big, big hurdle. <laughs> and were there still some features which you couldn't include? Hmm, I mean... I have a list of features I still want to add, maybe someday or not, I don't know. But I, oh, let me think. Is there a feature I couldn't achieve? Hmm, no, I don't think so, actually. Everything I wanted to make, I made. Um, yeah, of course, there's still some features I want to implement sooner or later. I can give you a small glimpse if you want to. Yeah, what can we expect in the future? Just let me open up my to-do list. <laughs> uh, so one big feature I was thinking about adding uh, was a wet clothes uh, system, like you have in Daisy Standalone. So if it's if you are in the water or it's cold, you're wet in that sense. Yeah, if if it's raining, you get uh, uh, you get wet and you have to change your clothing to get warm again, or you have to go to a fire to dry your clothes, something like that. Yeah, I actually I worked out a concept already, but I never finished it. So yeah, this is something I wanted to do. Uh, there's still so much more stuff. Uh, I what do I have here? I need to take a look. Uh, I wanted to add uh, maybe random toxic zones to the server. This is something I could do easily if I want to add. This also something I think the last frontier guys have on their server, if I remember. The toxic zone, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I talked with Canadian about the concept and I helped them a little bit coding it. So yeah, this was something I also maybe want to do someday on my servers. There's a lot more of uh, smaller custom stuff, but nothing. I think the big stuff is already done for our servers. It's relatively feature complete, I would say. And did you ever try to create an own map? Or was this never interesting to you that you make maps, basically? Um, it is interesting. Nowadays, yes, a lot more. 
but back in the days I never tried. I heard so much bad stuff about using the armor tools. I never gave it a shot, basically. <laughs> but yeah, it would be interesting, actually. I talked uh, about this with Captain ACAP uh, just recently. It would be very interesting, but I don't know. I think... Yeah, I think the time is uh, gone for Arma 2. Maybe, maybe for Daisy Standalone, I don't know, but not for Arma, I think. Yeah, sadly. NAP will be more or less the only maps where I can read the street signs. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one of the reasons I like this map. Actually, Linger has also named signs you can read. Oh, that's perfect. I really haven't played all the maps. I only played a few and yeah. After so many years, I still play them. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's a, I mean, nowadays it, it's not uh, like I play every day, but it, it's more like uh, I play for some months, then I play something else for some months. But I always come back to Arma 2 somehow. I don't know. <laughs> it's something about it. Before we go into that topic, I would like to ask here the last question for the server things and customization, and then maybe change location. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's a quick one, I guess. We, we touched a little bit before we started recording on that subject. Uh, for, for me, it's always very important that stuff is archived. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans basically to archive it in a sense of a wiki or a blog post, something beyond this video basically that the future can know about your project? Uh, I think it's very hard to do for our servers actually. The problem, also, um, yeah, I, I would want to, but the problem is my servers are so heavily customized it's crazy, actually. I mean, I, I don't know if I would show my server files to someone who starts Epoch. Uh, I think he wouldn't know what to do with anything of my files. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not that type of guy who writes text and stuff. So yeah, I don't think that this is an option for me, actually. Okay, I see. So we wish you a long, long, long life and also your servers that we can play forever. Yeah, no plans of shutting down anything yet. <laughs> That's good to hear. But yeah, let's go to the more personal side. But let's switch location before that. So we are now on the on this server's Sector B, I guess. Yeah, actually it was called Sector B back in the days, I think. <laughs> this location uh, is a map edition somebody made back in the days. And I use it nowadays for my own special mission I added to the server, yeah. Yeah, I can totally see how influenced you are by Origins, I love it. But that's, uh, that's also a funny thing, uh, let's talk about it real quick. Um, <laughs> I mean, as you maybe heard, I'm not a very big fan of, of the Origins mod <laughs> itself. Or, or the game, I have to say, because I don't like the attitude of the developers and everything. But besides that fact, I think Origin mod has some of the greatest assets uh, that were added to Armor to uh, Daisy. <laughs> it's a conundrum, I guess. Especially if you consider the, the time when it was released. Epoch was there, but it was still not as developed as today. And it was a huge improvement when we got Origins, especially that the housing was amazing back then. Funnily enough, uh, before I started playing Epoch, I played Origins actually. <laughs> so it was DayZ mod, some other mod, Origins, and then Epoch. <laughs> but once I got to Epoch, I never, yeah, I never switched back to Origins. You touched it before a little bit, the subject why you play this game and. Why are you still playing this game? What keeps you in it? For me personally, I would say nowadays it's more of uh, the factor of having your own servers and the feeling of uh, it's like your own child, you know? Yeah, I think this describes it's, uh, it's the best. Uh, it's your own child. You don't want to lose it. And that's why I still have it, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for the game itself, I don't know, there's something to it. Uh, for example, I tried Armor 3, I tried quite a lot of the mods and also the zombie survival mods that came out. I tried Epoch uh, for Armor 3, but it, I never got the same feeling, I don't know. 
the closest thing nowadays, I guess, uh, I get the same feeling is um, Daisy Standalone, which I'm also playing quite a lot. Yeah, I'm totally on the same page here. I played all the sequels to Armor and DayZ, and yeah, they don't have the same feeling. It's something special that keeps bringing me back. I think it's the basic premise of DayZ mod that uh, kept the things rolling. It was so simple, but so effective. And also it was, uh, I mean, in air quotes, it was realistic. The other games are not that realistic nowadays, I think. And that's the difference for me, yeah. That and the constant danger of dying by a door, by a staircase, <laughs> by the armor two gods. It's amazing. You can't have that anywhere else. Yeah. Um. Maybe except in Daisy Standalone. <laughs> yeah, but I understand what you're saying, yeah. And when you play the original Arma 2 version of DayZ, basically, what do you play? Do you play on Generous or Napf? Where do you spend the main time? Uh, actually, for me, it's all servers. I have to be honest. Uh, I like the difference of all the maps. That, that's also the reason why I am hosting all these maps. I mean, we have six servers. Every server has a different map. Uh, we have Taviana, we have Nap, we have um, Ternavos, we have um, Takistan, Namalks. Yeah, it's. Uh, I like uh, all these maps. Also, we had a Chernobyl zone server, but this one is down for now. Yeah. But I like all of the maps. The one with the most nostalgic background is Napf, of course, because it was my first server map. But yeah, I couldn't choose the favorite. But maybe some things you can choose on the favorite side. Maybe your favorite place or vehicles on those servers. Uh, vehicles? Um, yeah, there were a lot. They changed over the years because of all the patches and adjustments that have been made to the vehicles. Uh, nowadays, it's the Dingo that came with 107 from from the Army of the Czech Republic mod. mod. It's just a beast. I like it. I once liked all the Origins cars, but nowadays, yeah, there's better cars around. <laughs> and back in the days, of course, the SUV or the Vodnik, but that changed over the years, I have to say. Places-wise, oh, I couldn't choose a favorite also. I, I don't know. Every map has uh, something nice. Some place I always go to and loot there or something. Yeah, I couldn't choose actually. I just wondered, do you always build your base on the same location or do you switch it up after so many years? I switch it up, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every time I play on a server and I'm restarting, I place it somewhere else. Yeah, definitely. I think I never built a, a base on the same place. I couldn't remember at least. <laughs> I built so many pl uh, bases over the years. And going qu quickly back to the vehicles, I think you mentioned during one of my streams there is the wheeled Titanic in the game. Yeah. Where can I find it? Just for myself, for the future, I need this vehicle again. Uh, you can find it on land. It spawns like a normal car. You can find it, yeah. But you can also drive it around like a boat. It's perfect. It's it's the best vehicle in-game since <laughs> Daisy Origins. It's such, such a crazy idea. Yeah, yeah it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's one other favorite item I have to ask. What is your favorite activity in game? This also changes, and this is reflected by the free um, playstyles we have on this, on our servers. Uh, Sometimes it's just uh, running or driving around and looting places I want to loot. So this is why we have the scavenger. This is a character that, that basically is, is a loot goblin, basically, <laughs> as you say nowadays. And sometimes I want to roam around and kill some AIs. That's why we have the headhunter. And sometimes I just want to stay at my place, want to do some farming or something, and that's why we have the ranger. <laughs> it's pretty neat how it all fits together, you know, but uh, of course, I mean, all the concepts are coming from us and uh, they reflect our playstyles. And the playstyles a lot of players actually liked on our servers. You mentioned there's something I have to include in my list of questions for fut future interviews about servers. How active is the server? 
Oh, that, that's a very good question, actually. And now we are coming to the part uh, I mentioned again that um, Arma is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you really can say it, but uh, it is, yeah, on life support, I think. Uh, can you say it like this? La Sadly, yes. <laughs> It sounds bad, but it actually it what is what it is. Um, but this is something I don't have a problem with. Uh, with um, I mean, it is what it is nowadays. But there is uh, players around. I have yeah, we have players and they are playing still. Yeah, yeah. Some guys are with us for like ten years now. I think. Ooh, that's quite a long time. Yeah, I'm very proud of this actually, and uh, proud of all the players. Um, yeah, if they hear this, uh, thank you for playing on our servers all these years. It's crazy, actually, to me that... I mean, I played so much, but some of them still play a lot more than me. And they still... I, I mean, I'm the server owner. I have, I have fun with all these concepts and coding, but they are playing and playing and playing. And it's, yeah, it's very cool to see that, that they like our stuff so much. I also wonder, now you have a Discord, but did you have a website before that and a forum? How did you communicate, basically? Yeah, uh, before Discord, we had... Um, oh, what was the name of the... There's, there's one website you had where you could create a site of your own. And I think it was Engine. Was it Engine? Yeah, I also had a website there. <laughs> yeah, we had an Engine website with, with a forum. Uh, we paid for it every month. And yeah, there was a time, I don't know how many years ago it was, I wasn't into Arma anymore that much, so I shut down the servers for three months, and I also shut down the website and the forum. But once I restarted um, doing our servers and hosting our servers, this was a time when we saw that Discord is, was becoming great, uh, some, so big, so something uh, that people used, and that's when we said, okay, just let's do our own community there. Yeah, it was the best decision, I think. In general... I repeat myself sadly on many, many videos, but Discord is a really nice tool for communities basically who are just interested in talking about the server, about uh, the activities there, but to find them, it's really, really hard. So <laughs> websites still have a use sometimes at least. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say as well. But um, I mean, if you join our server, you get the uh, Discord address uh, instantly. So, yeah, but the problem here is, it's um, it's not hard, but annoying. Let's say that way to, to um, get the information from the the pop up or the the the, the screen basically to Discord. Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, the problem, the, this is a small uh, Discord rant uh, incoming. Uh, the problem is uh, that Discord uh, isn't allowing um, custom addresses, basically. I mean, if I could do discord.com backslash the last refugium, everything would be fine. I mean, you can guess uh, what the name is, but uh, yeah, you have to pay for it or something. I don't know. Ach, yeah, it is what it is. That and the problem that Discord doesn't have any any search function. Yeah. I, I don't need a custom uh, address, for example, if I can just look for the last refugium and I find it. But there isn't. I think there is a possibility. I, I once saw a website where you could search for communities. Yeah, I think there is, actually. But it doesn't work good. Yeah, th 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 there is... Uh... It doesn't work good. You have to go there and register your Discord. It's a little bit clunky, everything. It's not really integrated. The only real integrated stuff is behind more or less a paywall. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this was my experience as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in the long run, it hurts communities. Yeah. If you have, for example, a, a big AC forum or armor forum and you have uh, all the, the communities there you can find communities but on discord it's uh yeah you're correct yeah it would be cool to have something like this like a website for um yeah i don't know like like the bohemia website and forum where you basically have all the old armor guys the old daisy guys yeah I, I, together but i think the the interest isn't that great anymore nowadays i mean there are websites still you have open daisy you have the bohemia forum and everything but yeah 
not much going on there. But for the rare instance, new players find this server. What would you recommend <laughs> a new player? What should he do? Uh, th this is a very good question. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, we do have new players from time to time. And we have new players that uh, find Arma 2 Daisy and play it for the first time on our servers. And to be honest, I would like to be in their shoes uh, and would like to feel how it uh, yeah how it works for them when they try our servers for the first time. It would be a very funny experience, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't know what can I say, man. We always uh, tell our new players uh, right-click everything. <laughs> it, it's a meme nowadays because uh, you have so many custom. Uh, right-click options on our servers, so you can right-click a bottle to drink water, you can right-click a wood pile to craft a knife, you can right-click anything, I don't know. <laughs> and th this is a, a sort of a joke, uh, but also it's very true uh, that we tell our players to right-click everything. Yeah, and just survive, I guess. <laughs> I cannot say more about this. <laughs> It would be interesting to have somebody actually from our server that isn't uh, an old school player telling us about he feels. <laughs> but yeah. Well, m maybe I can convince a few poor souls to play this on events with me here and we can get some information for you. Just to add to this, uh, one big uh, hurdle for new players, I think, is uh, armor um, controls, I guess. Definitely. Definitely. I remember when we back had the, the first LAN parties and we teached our friends how to play this game or what you shouldn't do and what you should do in the game. It's very special. Yeah, this is. I, I think uh, besides the armor controls, I think everyone could play on our servers uh, easily. It's just that you have to get your grip around the armor controls. Once you figured that out, you can play it like any other survival game, I guess. And what should be the first goal for new armor players on this server in the sense of uh, where should they go for gear? Where can they find the best gear? So in my experience, the best thing to do is find a smaller village and loot it from top to bottom. This is uh, the best, uh, I, I got the best results out of this. After that, I would go to the first military area and yeah, from then on you can do whatever you want, but do not go into big cities. This is always something I would uh, recommend to new players because uh, you have the problem of the loot being uh, dispersed too much all around the area. You have AI around, you have so many zombies and so much events can happen that can kill you. Just find a smaller town. It uh, don't have to be the smallest, but uh, yeah, something in the middle, I guess. And you will have, you will find the best stuff. And yeah, this is what I would recommend. And then I have, of course, to touch a subject many old school players hate, but you already opened that door for me a few minutes ago. What are your thoughts of Daisy standalone? Well, actually, I'm pretty positive about uh, Daisy standalone. I'm actually playing it. It's the one game I'm playing besides Arma 2 right now. Yeah, I'm positive about it. And uh, there's another thing, maybe, I don't know if you want to make it in another question or section, but uh, I can tell you about a little bit of, about our daily standalone plans for the Lasso Fugium. <laughs> oh, definitely. I would love to hear about the future of the, the whole project. But before we go there, didn't you find it strange that the DC standalone is missing so many vehicles, features, items from the original game, basically? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, uh, if you play vanilla, no, if you play with mods, what it, that is what I do. Is it still very moddable in that sense? C can you have the same experience, basically? The first thing you have to understand about the Z standalone is uh, it's not the same engine and not the same coding language. Once you understand that, you know um, that there are limitations to what you can do. So, I mean, AMA2 coding is insane. To be honest, 
it's insane in the sense you can do anything you want. I mean, if I want to do Pokemon server, I can mod it, you know? I just need the assets and I can write the code. It's no problem. You can do so much stuff. And in Daisy Stone alone, it's a little bit more restricted in the way you have to uh, use uh, the, the stuff provided by the developers and you have to make your own um, PBO file, your own little mod file. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit different. It's not like in Arma 2 where you had a mission file where you put all your custom code and everything. It's nowadays, it's all in a mod file, basically, in, in a special one. But you can do very much. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff in Daisy Standalone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if I think about the good old days of, um, how was it called? Overpoch, I guess. It is heavily militarized and customized mod, basically. Yeah. We had an unbelievable amount of weapons and vehicles. Is this also a, a thing in DayZ standalone? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. Then. <laughs> I, I would say <laughs> there's more weapons and vehicles now in DayZ standalone with modding than there were ever in Arma 2. There's, there are so many weapon mod packs. I mean, there's a mod pack for anything. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's now the time to check DayZ standalone out. I was so disappointed in 2013, 14. When was the first release? Whenever? Yeah, uh, I just looked it up uh, recently. It was in the December of 2013. And it was so bare bone. Yeah, it was. And ju just half a year, year ago, we got Origins, this amazing map and mod, Taviana, Uh, it's yeah <laughs> there wasn't much reason to go for standalone yeah that's that's true of course but <laughs> shout out to all the modders that doing the stuff i mean without it daisy standalone would be dead i think but with it it's a pretty good experience nowadays mm, good to hear and about you uh, trying daisy standalone maybe you will want to wait a little bit with it <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah basically we are uh, i think we are Getting uh, going to host uh, some of our own servers for um, Daisy Standalone. So does this mean basically you stop developing here and go to Standalone, or is this just a side project then? Yeah, it's no, no, we don't stop anything. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's a private project. I do whatever I want when I want. You know, it's uh, yeah, it, it does sound harsh, but uh, it just means that. Uh, If I'm interested in doing something for Arma 2, I do it. If I want something to do uh, with uh, Daisy Standalone, I do it. Of course, I understand that as a content creator, you also want to play with new toys and the new tools and everything. It's just new after so many years in Arma 2. It's refreshing, I guess. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, you can say so. Well, then I would close it slowly off with my last question. Can you maybe describe me one or two of your favorite memories in Arma 2, Daisy Standalone or Daisy Epoch, whatever you decide? <laughs> uh, oh, the, this is a hard one. <laughs> uh, there is so many stuff. I wouldn't know where to begin, to be honest. Oh, God. Uh, I mean, there were so many interesting players on our servers over the years in a good and a bad and or a bad way this is a very memorable thing for me then i met so many people i had fun with uh, uh yeah some went uh, uh, came and went others stayed this is also a very good experience um yeah we had so much fun doing special missions together and uh building bases like huge uh Uh, clan bases on our servers and everything. Yeah, uh, I couldn't pick a single detail, to be honest. Did you ever host big events where basically the house was full? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we did back in the days. Yeah, we did quite a lot of events. We did, uh, funnily enough, <laughs> we did some PvP events <laughs> on our server. <laughs> That's coming from the PvE player, but oh well. Yeah, we made um, PvP events on our servers. They were actually pretty cool because we made them special. We made them like 
Um, yeah, if you if I think about it nowadays, it, it resembles uh, PUBG quite a lot nowadays. So what we did was we had an island uh, on Napf here in the north, which was a PvP zone, and everyone uh, flew with a MV22 and we dropped off. And yeah, once you uh, were on the ground, there were loot crates all around the map. You had to find them, and uh, we only used some uh, low-level guns, like a shotgun, a lay field, and stuff like this. And then, yeah, we killed us, uh, <laughs> and the winner got something. Um, we also did, um, like, races, like where, we, where we, everyone got the same car, like an ATV or a SUV, and we started... Uh, somewhere and had to make a round all over the map, for example. Uh, yeah, uh, I also, uh, yeah, I don't know, not that long ago, I had an idea for another event, uh, basically like a survival challenge event, where I had to do, uh, how do you say it? Um, you had to do 20 things off a bucket list, basically. And who gets the most points is the winner. And yeah, but that never realized because yeah, the player base was too small or too dispersed over the servers. We couldn't find a consent. But the ideas are still there. And yeah, the events were very funny back in the days. Uh -huh. Such good memories also on my part, being a member of those events, not on your servers, but different servers, of course. Yeah, yeah. I guess everyone did them uh, once in a while. <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned something if I ever would create a server, I also would go in, the, in that direction, having either PvP events or have um, <laughs> PvP time slots, for example. Until afternoon, for example, it's PvE, and then two or three hours, you can kill each other. And then, again, peace time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, there are servers in Daisy Standalone that do this concept but i have to be honest i'm not a fan but uh, of course i mean i'm only a pve player i don't bother with pvp but yeah maybe it's fun for some people i don't know yeah especially you have to see if this concept really works with different um player amounts if you have too less it can get annoying and if you have maybe too much it can also get annoying so you always have to adapt to that but i think there are many play styles and many different flavors in this game yeah <laughs> but yeah i would say this is the part of the video where I open the mic to you is there anything we should talk about anything we have missed i mean we talked about a lot of stuff quite extensively i wouldn't know what to add, add to that actually hmm. definitely not a problem i will definitely add every information in the video description and i would say that's it for this video. Leave us a comment, tell us what you think about the game, and of course, play the game. Until next time, bye bye.